The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning, new every morning. Great is your faithfulness, O Lord. Great is your faithfulness. <clears throat> the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning, new every morning. Great is your faithfulness, O Lord. <clears throat> Great is your faithfulness. Well, good morning to you. Good morning on this January 16. January 16. But I'm recording an hour early because I am making up yesterday, okay? So the reading and everything today will be from January 15, and I will make it up because we just didn't use Facebook yesterday to make a statement, okay? It was very hard for me. I don't think I'll ever do that again. But I do believe the Lord was in it. And so I said, okay, I will do both readings on the 16th. So let this be clear. This reading today is for yesterday, January 15th. That's why I'm recording early at 6 in the morning. And then I'll do the other one at 7. Good morning, Miss Kay. She's up early and she's joining me. Hallelujah. It's nice to have a sister with me. Today on this reading for yesterday, January 15th, we will be in Genesis 31, picking up with verse 17 and reading part of 32 also. <clears throat> and so to get this little throat and voice going, let me have a sip before I let it go cold. All right, Genesis 31, verse 17. This is just a continuing, continuing wonderful story of the lives of this whole family. And then Jacob, Jacob, rose and set his sons and his wives on camels. He has just finished having a big discussion with his wives about how their father has cheated him and made him work for both of them to marry them, all that has gone on. And now he's ready to go back. And he knows, he knows, he knows that Laban is going to try to stop that again. Okay, so he's saying no, and the ladies are agreeable. He set his sons and his wives on camels. And he carried away all his livestock and all his possessions, which he had gained. And he worked hard for them, too. His acquired livestock, which he had gained in Padam Aram, <clears throat> to go to his father, Ixach, Isaac, in the land of Canaan. Now Laban, we would say Laban if we were looking at it. Now Laban had gone to shear his sheep. And I'm sure that had something to do with the timing here that Jacob, Jacob, is using to leave. And Raquel had stolen the household idols oh, that were it that were her father's. Mm -mm -mm. And Jacob stole away, unknown to Laban the Syrian in that he did not tell him that he intended to flee. So he fled with all that he had. He arose and he crossed the river and he headed toward the mountains of Gilead. And Laban was told on the third day, he got three days ahead, that Jacob, Jacob had fled and then he took his brethren with him, <clears throat> and he pursued him 
for seven days' journey, and he overtook him in the mountains of Gilead. Jacob was going s slower because of all of the animals. They all could only travel at a certain rate. But God, oh, <clears throat> that's what I love to hear. But God. I hope we hear a couple of wonderful but gods today. Good morning, Miss Luann. We are reading and recording yesterday's reading, the reading for January 15th. We are reading it here on the 16th. And Miss <clears throat> Luann, we are in Genesis 31, verse 25. So Laban overtook Jacob. Now Jacob had pitched his tent. Oh, wait a minute. I missed something. Let's go back to 22. And Laban was told on the third day that Jacob had fled. And then he took his brethren with him and he pursued him for seven days journey. And he overtook him in the mountains of Gilead. But God had come to Laban the Syrian in a dream by night and said to him, be careful that you speak to Jacob, neither good or bad. So he had that to think over, okay, from that dream. <clears throat> so Laban overtook Jacob. Now Jacob had pitched his tent in the mountains, and Laban, with his brethren, pitched in the mountains of Gilead. And Laban said to Jacob, what have you done? Oh, speak neither good nor bad. Okay, he isn't off to a good start, is he? And Laban said to Jacob, What have you done that you have stolen away unknown to me and carried away my daughters like captives taken with the sword? Why did you flee away secretly and steal away from me and not tell me? For I might have sent you away with joy and songs, with timbrel and harp. <clears throat> but I kind of think he would have badgered the daylights out of him, don't you think? And you did not allow me to kiss my sons and my daughters. Now, you have done foolishly. Are we obeying God's dream? <clears throat> now, you have done foolishly in so doing. It is in my power to do you harm. But the God of your father spoke to me last night, saying... Be careful that you speak to Jacob neither good or bad. Just some neutral conversation. And now you have surely gone because you greatly long for your father's house. But why did you steal my gods? And then Jacob answered and said to Laban, Because I was afraid, for I said, Perhaps you would take your daughters from me by force. With whomever you find your gods, do not let him live. In the presence of our brethren, identify what I have of yours and take it with you. <clears throat> For Jacob did not know that Raquel, we would say Rachel, Raquel had stolen them. Mm-mm-mm. And Laban went into Jacob's tent, into Leah's tent, and into the two maids' tents. But he did not find them. And then he went out of Leah's tent and entered Raquel's tent. Now Raquel had taken the household idols, put them in the camel's saddle, and sat on them. And Laban searched all about the tent, but did not find them. And she said to her father, see, it's going to cause her to lie. Let it not displease my Lord that I cannot rise before you, for the manner of women is with me. <clears throat> In other words, she's having her monthly period. And he searched, but he did not find the household idols. And then Jacob was angry. 
Boy, this really turns him on. Now he's going to break out with both barrels against this man. He's left. He's on his way home. And he's going to tell him what he's thought all these years. <laughs> Has that ever happened to you? You store it all up, which we shouldn't. We should take care of it daily, shouldn't we? And then suddenly, bam, man, we let loose. And then Jacob was angry, and he rebuked Laban. And Jacob answered and said to Laban, What is my trespass? After he's made a mess of everybody's tent, searching under everything. I bet everything was a mess. What is my sin that you have so hotly pursued me? Although you have searched all my things, what part of your household things have you found? Set it here before my brethren and your brethren that they may judge between us both. These 20 years, here we go, you ready? These 20 years I have been with you your ewes and your female goats have not miscarried their young, and I have not eaten the rams of your flock. That which was torn by beasts, I did not bring to you. I bore the loss of it. You required it from my hand, whether stolen by day or stolen by night. There I was. In the day the drought consumed me, and the frost by night, and my sleep departed from my eyes. Ooh, we're going to really paint a picture here. And thus I have been in your house 20 years. I served you 14 years for your two daughters, and six years for your flock. And you have changed my wages 10 times. Ten times. I mean, stop and think about that. You'd be angry too. Ten times you've changed my wages. Unless the God of my father, the God of Abraham, and the fear of Isaac had been with me, surely now you would have sent me away empty-handed. God has seen my affliction and the labor of my hands and rebuked you last night. And Laban answered and said to Jacob, These daughters are my daughters, and these children are my children, and this flock is my flock. All that you see is mine. But what can I do this day to these my daughters or to their children whom they have borne? Now therefore, come, let us make a covenant, you and I, and let it be a witness between you and me. <clears throat> Good idea. I mean, are we going to just yell at one another forever? Or what are we going to do about it here? So Jacob took a stone and set it up as a pillar. And then Jacob, Jacob said to his brethren, gather stones. And they took stones and made a heap. And I don't think it was just a little tiny thing. I think they made a big heap like a big memorial pillar, and they ate there on the heap. And Laban called it Yagar Sahadutha, but Jacob called it Galid. And both of those words, one in Arabic and one in Hebrew, mean heap of witness, heap of witness. And Laban said, this heap, is a witness between you and me this day. Therefore, its name is called Galid. Also, Mispah. Mispah means the word watch. Watch. Not like a watch on your hand. Watch with your eyes. Because he said, May the Lord watch between you and me when we are absent one from another. If you afflict my daughters... Or if you take other wives besides my daughters, although no man is with us, see, God is witness between you and me. Hallelujah, we've got that one straight. Then Laban said to Jacob, Here is this heap, and here is this pillar, which I have placed between you and me. This heap is a witness 
And this pillar is a witness that I will not pass beyond this heap to you. And you will not pass beyond this heap and this pillar to me for harm. So both of them have agreed to draw a line in the sand here, okay? Oh, this is as far as we go. You will not pass beyond this heap and this pillar to me for harm. The God of Avraham, the God of Nahor, the God of their father, judge between us. And Jacob swore by the fear of his father, Ixach. And then Jacob offered a sacrifice on the mountain and called his brethren to eat bread. And they ate bread and they stayed all night on the mountain. And early in the morning, Laban arose and kissed his sons and daughters and blessed them. Whoa, now we have gotten to a great attitude, haven't we? We have settled the matter. There's a memorial line. You don't cross it one way. I don't cross it to you. This is, this is the line. And then Laban departed and returned to his place. So we hotly worked that one through, didn't we? We move right along to chapter 32 of Genesis, Bereshit. 32, verse 1. So Jacob went on his way, and the angels of God met him. And when Jacob saw them, he said, This is God's camp. And he called the name of that place Mahanim which means double camp, double camp. How about that? His, his camp, but God's camp. And then Jacob sent messengers before him to Esau, his brother, in the land of Seir, the country of Edom. And he commanded them saying, speak thus to my Lord Esau. Thus your servant Jacob says, I have dwelt with Laban and stayed there until now. I have oxen, donkeys, flocks, and male and female servants, and I have sent to tell my Lord that I may have favor in your sight. <clears throat> and this would have been the thing uppermost on his mind, wouldn't it? I'm going home, but I have to face Esau, and he wanted to kill me when, when I left. And then the messengers returned to Jacob, saying, We came to your brother Esau, and he also is coming to meet you, and four hundred men are with him. So Jacob was greatly afraid and distressed, and he divided the people that were with him and the flocks and the herds and the camels into two companies. And he said, if Esau comes to the one company and attacks it, then the other company which is left will escape. He's making a plan of if he comes and he's going to kill us all, what are we going to do? And then Jacob said, Oh God of my father Abraham and, and God of my father Isaac, the Lord who said to me, Return to your country and to your family and I will deal well with you. He's reminding God of his words, isn't he? And believing somehow you're going to take care of me through this. I am not worthy of the least of all the mercies and of all the truth which you have shown your servant. For I crossed over this Jordan with my staff, and now I have become two companies. Deliver me, I pray from the hand of my brother, from the hand of Esau, for I fear him, lest he come and attack me and the mother with the children. For you said, I will surely treat you well and make your descendants as the sand of the sea, which cannot be numbered for multitude. You can't count the sand. I mean, even a handful. 
would be the biggest challenge in the world. We one, two, can't be done. All right, we leave you on that cliffhanger as the journey home continues for Jacob and his family and all that he gained. And we move right over to Matthew, the New Covenant, the New Testament, the first book of the New Testament, Matthew, Matayahu, chapter 10, picking up with verse 24, picking up with 24. A disciple is not above his teacher, nor a servant above his master. It is enough for a disciple that he be like his teacher and a servant like his master. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebub, whoo, Beelzebub, that's not good, is it? The devil. How much more will they call those of his household? Therefore, do not fear them, for there is nothing covered that will not be revealed and hidden that will not be known. And we can really identify with those words, can't we? <clears throat> because hidden things are being revealed today. Thank the Lord. Whatever I tell you in the dark, speak in the light. And what you hear in the ear, preach on the housetops. And do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. But rather, fear him who is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a copper coin? And are not and not one of them falls to the ground apart from your father's will. Wow, that, that, that's a beautiful thing to store in our hearts. But the very hairs of your head are all numbered. And I think that every morning when I, I watch a few in my brush and I go, well, somebody subtracted in heaven. Do not fear, therefore, you are of more value than many sparrows. And take that in today, y'all. Be encouraged. You are a son or a daughter of the Most High King, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Yeshua HaMashiach, the Messiah. So, such encouragement from the Lord Jesus. Therefore, Whoever confesses me before men, him I will also confess before my Father, who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, him I will also deny before my Father, who is in heaven. Do not think that I came to bring peace on earth, <clears throat> I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And we we have a great temptation today, don't we, in America, with this election fraud going on, one side or the other. And you're either going to excuse one another and be patient and loving, or there's a great family fight and fallout. A daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a man's enemies will be those of his own household. And that's what's so hard, isn't it? He who loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. That's a tough statement. And he who loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he who does not take his cross, take it up, and follow after me 
is not worthy of me. He who finds his life will lose it. But he who loses his life for my sake, for Jesus' sake, not any reasons of the world, but because of Jesus, they will find it. And isn't that true? I mean, we thought we had our life in our hands. And then things were terrible and we came to Jesus <clears throat> and he gave us a brand new born again life. And so we lost that old life, didn't we? And we lost some family members or friends possibly with it. But we it was a new life. It was a new beginning, hallelujah. He who receives you receives me. And he who receives me receives him who sent me. He who receives a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. And he who receives a righteous man in the name of a righteous man shall receive a righteous man's reward reward. <clears throat> we have a fair and wonderful God, don't we? And whoever gives one of these little ones only a cup of water, cold water, in the name of a disciple, assuredly I say to you, he shall by no means lose his reward. Even down to just the very simplest of kindnesses, a little cup of water given. God sees it all. And there's a reward for doing righteous acts, isn't there? There is a reward. And we move along <clears throat> to chapter 11 of Matthew, Matayahu. Now it came to pass when Jesus finished commanding his 12 disciples that he departed from there to teach and to preach in their cities. And when John, John the Baptist, had heard in prison about the works of Christ, he sent two of his disciples and said to him, Are you the coming one, or do we look for another? And Jesus answered and said to them, Go and tell John the things which you hear and see. And here's the list. The blind see, and the lame walk. The lepers are cleansed, and the deaf hear. The dead are raised up, and the poor have the gospel preached to them. And blessed, blessed is he who is not offended because of me. <clears throat> and I pray in this day and age that you are not offended of Jesus. It, you don't get intimidated or shy away. Even when the face looking at you that you're talking with, you know, you know they're not going to like it. That's all right. Maybe this is the last time you talk to them. Say something anyway. Ask the Holy Spirit to give you something to say that will ring in their ears and their spirit. Long after they leave you, even if they're furious that you would mention Jesus, do it anyway. Many times I've done that. And <clears throat> boy, they <clears throat> cut me off as a friend. <laughs> and it hurt. It hurt. I didn't like it. But later, sometimes years later, I find out that person came to the Lord. And when I see them again, they tell me. They tell me, because it's bugged them. I was really angry with you, da-da-da-da-da-da-da. All right, we move right along <clears throat> to Psalm 13. To Psalm 13. And for those of you who might be listening, just came, you're kind of going, mm, what's going on? It's not 7 o'clock. No, I missed yesterday, the 15th of January, because I chose to try to stay off of Facebook for 24 hours. I mean, <clears throat> let's disappear, okay? And what happens? They lose great deal. They lose billions, right? 
Okay, well, I did it. I didn't like it. And I'm probably not going to do that again. <clears throat> I don't care what's going on in the earth. This is what's important. This is what's important. Psalm 13. To the chief musician, a psalm of David. David. How long, O oh Lord, will you forget me forever? You ever feel like that? How long will you hide your face from me? How long shall I take counsel in my soul, having sorrow in my heart daily? How long will my enemy be exalted over me? Very good question. One a lot of us are asking today. Consider and hear me, O oh Lord my God. Enlighten my eyes, lest I sleep the sleep of death. Lest my enemy say, I have prevailed against him. Lest those who trouble me rejoice when I am moved. But I have trusted in your mercy. My heart shall rejoice in your salvation. I will sing. I will sing unto the Lord because he has dealt bountifully with me. So David comes to a good conclusion, doesn't he? He goes from how long, O Lord, will you forget me forever to I will sing to the Lord because he has dealt bountifully with me. Sometimes we need to sing and talk our own selves back into a good praising attitude, don't we? This is a great example for you and me of that very thing. All right, we wrap up today's reading with Proverbs chapter 3, verses 16 through 18. Proverbs 3, verses 18, 16 <clears throat> through 18, and we will conclude the reading that was to be read yesterday, January 15th, and I am going to get ready. Woo, I've done well. I have a whole half hour. And I am going to wait. I'm going to get back on schedule. And I will be back to read for today, January 16, and the scriptures for today. Okay? All right, we wrap it up with Proverbs 3, 16 through 18. Ah, this is so good about wisdom. Wisdom. <clears throat> Length of days is in her wisdom's right hand. She's called by feminine terms, she. And listen, look at this. Length of days is in her right hand, wisdom's. In her left hand, riches and honor. Her ways are ways of pleasantness and all her paths our peace. Wisdom, if you use it and you wait and let the Holy Spirit give it to you for whatever situation, I mean, you're not sure what to do and you'd like to kind of explode or whatever, just stop a minute and ask the Lord for wisdom. Wait on it and you'll feel it. You'll say, mm, yes, that's good. And then follow and it will bring peace in the end. She is a tree of life. Wisdom is a tree of life to those who take hold of her. And happy are all who retain her. Not only receive some, but hang on to a wonderful spirit of wisdom. Right? Hallelujah to the Lamb. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Well, y'all, it makes my heart feel good that I have caught up here with that reading for yesterday. This was the reading for January 15. Okay? Let's close in prayer. Oh, Father God, we come to you gratefully. We come to you because we love you and because you invited us to come 
And we take that invitation very seriously. And we have become prayer warriors because of that invitation. And so, Lord, all of us here, we come before you and we acknowledge you. We acknowledge you, Jesus, as Lord, Lord over our lives, Savior, Deliverer, Lord over the country that we live in. We acknowledge, Jesus, that your obedience to your Father was perfect. Perfect. You obeyed. You came. You were sinless, but you allowed them to torture you and put you on the cross for us, for me, for you. And you paid the price of my brother's and sister's sins and my sin. I should have paid the price. You paid the price long before I was even born. And now you have left us a pathway, a ticket, if you would, to heaven. You have said those that would come and receive you and receive what you did and accomplished. All that was in the words, it is finished. Oh, those powerful words split the rocks and rip the hem in the temple. And with it came resurrection, resurrection life. We will pass through death and go on in eternal life with you. Oh, if you haven't prayed a short prayer, let me just stop. If you haven't prayed a short prayer, I urge you, this is the most important decision of your whole life. And it's not all that hard, y'all, okay? Simply from your heart, just bow your head and just say simple words of your own. They don't have to be grandiose. There's no these or thous. Just say something like, Father God, I come before you. I come before you, Jesus. And I ask you to forgive me of my sins, all the ones that I know and all the ones that I don't even know, please wash me with your blood that you shed for me on the cross. Please forgive me and come, come in. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus, and bring me a new life. I let the old life go, the old attitudes, the old regrets, I let them go. I, I give them to you. And I know that you will make them somehow good in my life. And you will bring me a brand new, a brand new life. Amen. Now, I said a whole lot more words than you need to say because I was trying to speak understanding for anyone who's saying, what? You want me to do what? I don't know how to do that. Now you do. Now you do. You can say it now. You can say it after I say goodbye and shut off. But don't let the day pass. Don't let one more day lost from God pass. This might be your last day. We don't know. You don't want to slip into hell that you didn't repent. And that's a good word. That's not a fearsome word. It's a good word, a cleansing word for you and me. I've never regretted it, and neither will you. Let me know. I mean, we would love it <clears throat> if you'd put that down, if you'd say, wow, you know what? I prayed with you guys yesterday or whenever, and he came. We would like to know. So, Father, we hold up. <clears throat> your country that you love so much, Israel. We hold up Yerushalayim. We pray for their peace today. You've asked us to. And so we pray those words. We're never tired, Lord, 
<clears throat> of praying for peace for Israel and Jerusalem. Lord, we hold up Bibi Netanyahu, the prime minister, and we ask, Lord, that you give him the kind of wisdom we read about in Proverbs. Please, Lord, please give him wisdom every day that he might follow your will and your way. Cause the Knesset, <clears throat> the ruling body, to work with this man and to do, do good works for Israel. Father, I hold up America to you at this crossroads time. And I'd ask, Lord, that your perfect will <clears throat> would rule and reign today. Lord, help us to keep looking up to you. Not our eyes on the problem, not all worked up and upset. But Lord, we will trust you. Your ways are higher than ours. Every day you surprise us. Every day we think you're going to do A, B, C, and every day you do D, E, and F. <laughs> but sometimes it comes right back to doing what we were thinking all along. So your ways are higher, Lord. You have not left the throne room. You've not gotten up. You're not worried. <laughs> <clears throat> this plan was from the beginning before the creation of the earth in you and I. So he's a big God and you can trust him. You can pray to him. You can sing unto him. You can love on him today. That's what I'm going to do. A few more scripture songs as I heat up my coffee. And I will see you back at 7 20 minutes from now on, we will read today's scriptures, January 16. So get Genesis 32, 13 ready, okay? Oh, Lord, you are steadfast. <clears throat> the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come, never to an end. I love you all. Bye-bye.